Right, hello there once again. It's the second revision video in this week's instalment. Um, and as you know, this week I've been doing requests for revision videos. Now, one thing I didn't make clear last time, if you're new to my channel, I'm not an expert on this, okay? I'm taking my A levels just as you are, most probably. Unless you've tuned in to learn about the Easter cycle for fun, which you might have done. So, as yes, today we're going to be doing biology. It's the AQA A2 syllabus for biology, but presumably it relates to a whole range of A level syllabuses. And we're going to be doing the Easter cycle. Brilliant! So I'm sure this is going to be very enriching <laughs> for you all. Um, first of all, what do we mean by the Easter cycle? The Easter cycle is a cycle of events controlled by hormones which goes on in the reproductive system of female mammals. Right? Um, people don't know how to distinguish between the Easter cycle and the menstrual cycle. They're the same thing. The menstrual cycle is what goes on in primates. So it's what we're going to be looking at. Because um, we're primates. So the menstrual cycle is the estrus cycle in primates. Just make that clear. Oh, I haven't said either what the request, the request is from. Right. The, the request is actually from a woman, which I, <laughs> I don't know whether that's slightly worrying or not. But anyway, this, <laughs> this is um, what she said. It's by Robin Cunningham. Yes, absolutely brilliant. Obviously, I'm sure she's revising, you know, as we speak. Um, and she said, menstrual cycle. That was a bit of a disappointment, wasn't it? Right, okay, now, what are we going to be doing? Now, this is all relates to sort of the negative feedback mechanisms which we've covered elsewhere in Unit 5. And we're going to be looking at specific examples of that in the process of the estrus cycle. Right, estrus cycle, or menstrual cycle, relies on four hormones. Two of them are released from the pituitary gland in the brain. The other two are released from the ovaries, which is obviously in the reproductive area. So, what are we going to be doing? Two released from the pituitary gland are called FSH and LH. FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone. And LH, I can't remember how to pronounce this word, but it's luteinizing hormone. I may have got that wrong. From the ovaries, we've got estrogen and progesterone. And we're going to see how all these work and link together in the whole of the cycle. Right. Well, first thing that happens, obviously, if we start at day zero, if you like, the uterus lining breaks down and you get some blood released. But then this is when the whole star cycle starts. I'm going to write it up. FSH, I need a lot of room here. Let's write it on here. FSH released from the pituitary gland. I'm just going to say FSH is released to simplify things. So the pituitary gland, the brain releases FSH. Now the clue is in the title here. FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. It will stimulate follicles to develop. They're in the ovaries. So, next step is follicles develop. And as they develop, they secrete the hormone estrogen. I say secrete, release estrogen, let's say. Right, I hope you can see my handwriting from there. Now, this is where people get a little bit confused. In small concentrations, estrogen inhibits the production of FSH and LH. But, particularly LH. But, as the level of estrogen increases more and more and more, it actually does the opposite. So, as estrogen is released in small amounts, it prevents FSH and LH being released. So that's an example of negative feedback. But then, when it gets beyond a certain level, it does the opposite. So let's skip straight to that step, sorry. Beyond 
certain level, oestrogen stimulates, we're just going to put LH production because that's the one we're really focused on. So this is where LH comes into the story. LH stimulates ovulation, the release of an egg from those follicles. So the FSH has caused the follicles to develop, the LH is what stimulates it actually to release that egg. So, ovulation occurs. Now, once the follicle has released that egg, the LH also stimulates this empty follicle to develop into a structure known as a corpus luteum. So, um, LH stimulates, I'm using stimulates a lot today, stimulates corpus luteum development. Right? So, corpus luteum. It's a fancy word. Now, this corpus luteum will release our fourth hormone, progesterone. So progesterone is released. Now what does that progesterone do? Now progesterone will inhibit the production of FSH and LH. So it prevents further um, ovulation occurring and also prevents further follicles developing. So this is an example of negative feedback. Something I didn't point out by the way is that when uh, what am I talking about? When oestrogen stimulates LH production that's an example of positive feedback isn't it? Because it's moving it further away from um, the equilibrium position if you like. Progesterone released which inhibits LH and FSH. Now, if fertilization hasn't occurred, which most of the time it won't, um, because sperm isn't present, so if the egg isn't fertilized, this corpus luteum, this empty follicle, will degenerate. In other words, it will die. So, as it dies, that means it will stop producing progesterone. Something I didn't mention also is that the progesterone maintains the lining of the uterus. It stops it from breaking down. But, as this corpus luteum is degenerates, less progesterone is produced. As progesterone inhibits the production of FSH and LH, that means less FSH is inhibited. So then we can see the cycle starting again. So, if not fertilized, corpus luteum, I'm going to say dies because I can't be bothered to write degenerate. In the exam you write degenerate. Um, corpus luteum dies, less oestrogen, less progesterone, it's late at night. Produced. So because of that, less FSH is inhibited, so we're back up to the start again. And that in mammals occurs over a period of about 28 days. There you go, all you females out there. Robin, I hope that's helped you. <laughs> right, I don't know why I'm laughing really. Um, I was desperate to watch Britain's Got Talent last time, this time I did it afterwards, but the problem, problem is now, it's late at night and I'm tired. But anyway, I hope that's helped. If you want to, something I recommend doing is looking at page uh, 216, lovely diagram there to seeing what inhibits and what stimulates what. Um, if you learn it, you can sort of learn it like a figure of eight, you can move your hand all over it and do a nice figure of eight and, you know, Pleasure yourself with the Easter cycle. Anyway, that's all from me. Good night.